Israel, the coverage out of Chabra, it's a late hour, so we can't do the external music. We're all going to tap into the niggin within ourselves. And it should be the Kraka niggin. Kraka niggin. So we'll do 10 seconds of silence. Sing your own niggin to yourself. And Bezrat Hashem will return in 10 seconds. The covered Shabbos, the covered Shabbos, Kaidesh, the covered Purim, Purim in one day, Purim in one day. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We've been counting down since 105. And we have to say, Atfila Bashim, Kla Israel, the covered Shabbos, the covered Shabbos, the covered Purim, the covered all of Am Israel. From now on, Rebona Shalom, let us carry out everything the Torah teaches in love. Arouse your love for me. Shine your Holy Spirit upon us. Bring us to learn Torah, both the written and the oral Torah, with such holy intensity that when I am studying, I will have the power to connect my soul with the soul of the tzaddik who first revealed the teaching or law I am learning. Bezrat Hashem, through the halachos, through the kutei tfilos, through the beyond their kechas of the world and the sichos arans of the world, May our souls, Mamash, be connected to the tzaddik. Mamash, the grab stealing Torahs, the stealing Torahs of the world. Meaning all, all of our souls. All of our souls are being connected right now. So good. Chavra, there's a lot going on. There's one day until Perm. One day. Mamash. The fast starts in about six hours. Um, a little over six hours. And... Mm-hmm. This may be the, the I'm, I'm sure we're going to be able to do a Zoom tomorrow. This is the Shem, the Shem's help. We'll have to do a, a weird time. It could be like a situation like tonight where it's late or earlier. We will be flexible, Gavaldic. Um, But we're going to tap into the Avoda of drinking on Perm. Adelaida. Now, Rav Meyer talks about, he has like a whole introduction of what it really is and what it means in Chevra. I am going <laughs> to, 931 in 14, sec- in 14 seconds. What is that? It's a so weird what? time. It's a weird time. It's a weird time. Um, <laughs> and and uh, in Chevra, um, Do you guys hear me? Oh, you guys hear me. Gavaldic. There's an English PDF of the Beyond Der Kecha, and there's 43 pages. So it's pretty much what we went through over the past couple of weeks and what we're going through tonight. All, um, all uh, translated. And it's beautiful. I'll send out the PDF to the chat right after this. Um, so let's dive in. The Voda of Shtia. The paw, right? The vote of drinking and, and the practicality of it. This matinus, right? We have to drink moderately. Ravich Meyer explains, and my and my friend helped me on this on, the, on this translation because Ravich Meyer gives a three step process that Avi Karkowski and I have been yearning for for so long. And the first step is that we have to drink slowly so that we could feel. Um, like it has an impact on us, like the 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 shia, the yayin, and we have to use our good judgment, right? And we have to know when it's enough and not to overdo it. One may think to to drink fifteen bottles of wine, maybe two is enough, maybe one's enough, maybe half. We have to use our judgment. Now the second, now this is just like kitzer, like the three points, but we could look at the points inside, and the PDF will be sent to you after. Right. Secondly, if you drink moderately. And slowly, then you are able to tap into the penis and the regashos, right? So by drinking slowly and moderately and not overdoing it from the start, not by, you know, you get you get to the suda and you have like your bottles of wine ready and you're just like opening them up and chugging them down. And you're like, right, that's a high level. We all know that's a high level. But there's another perspective 
where if we go slowly and we go moderately and we're aware of what we're consuming and how much we're consuming, we're able to tap in. It'll be a much more pleniastic, um, I guess, experience. Pleniastic. <laughs> so, um, Kishmak. And the third step, and the third step, if you drink fast and intensely and with, um, and that you're chugging those bottles of wine, right? You're going to pass out. You're going to pass out. You're going to pass out eventually. But the other side, the flip side, the one that Rabbi Itchmeyer is talking about, if we drink moderately, if we drink slowly and we have good judgment, we will also pass out. We will pass on the couch eventually. But Gewalt, are we entering the Panemius? Gewalt, do we tap into the Elokos? Gewalt that we recognize in Omavado and all these beautiful things. Now, two people are on the couch. One was Morkitsoni and one was Pinimi. However, there's just a couple of perspectives. I don't get drunk, I have a brain. <laughs> Samson Schiff is unbelievable. What would we do without Samson? The time of drinking, we literally just have to like stop. We have to stop and be like, I'm here at the Suda Supreme. I receive the light from the Kriyas Megillah. I understand, or, or I know, I know what's going on. I can't grasp it. I'm trying to form myself into a proper kli to receive the light, but I know there's so much going on in Perm. But right now, I'm at the Suda. Envision yourselves and say, I am here and I want to mavata myself towards you. I want to completely nullify myself. Asher oro mimela esakol. The ani mochik, ani mochik et atzmi. Right? I want to go to the extent where a mamish just completely ridding on myself. Um, let's keep going. So I don't really understand. Um, I don't want anything. This is what I'm understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want anything separated from me. I want to be conjoined. I want to be one with the Rebona Shalom. I don't want separation. I'm evacuating myself. I'm nullifying myself. I'm ridding myself in order to just be one with you. Not separate. Not that I'm one and not, not that I'm two and you're one. We're all one. We're all one. And Rav Ishmael ends off this beautiful chilek, the az bezrat Hashem, yargish ech shitoch kedei ashtia ba'machshavos ha'elu. Right, so bezrat Hashem will be able to feel while we're drinking our machshavos who nishav v'nimas v'nimas v'toch mesias Hashem isbrach that we will be drawn and, and Mamish will melt inside the reality of the Rebbe Shalom. Right? Understand that there's no separation whatsoever. Rather, I'm here, it's here, and I'm completely drawn to it. I'm completely connected to it. I'm yearning for it. Mevatel, the mevatel at atzmo, elav, yisparach legamre. And be able to mevatel ourselves to the Ibn Shalom, the Gamre completely. Bezrat Hashem Chavar through the Shtia. May we come to this place of mevatel. May we come to this place of Ein O Mevatel. May we come to this place of, of, of self, uh, trying to find the words, of um, self awareness, self awareness, what's too much and what's just enough. Right, that will allow me to tap into the panemius of the day and of the light and of our of our souls. And Bizrat Hashem, may we may we be right now, right now, the preparations right now, right now, Hitrachus, 
Questions, comments, please feel free. The covered perm. Oh, Samson's got the hamantash in. And also, thank you guys for coming on such a weird time. Such a weird time. This time doesn't work for anyone. But Gavadik works for the Rabbana Shalom. <laughs> works for the Rabbana Shalom, and that's why we're all here. In Omevada, we're just trying to get closer. We're just trying. We're just trying. At the engagement, before Samson opens up the heart, I was at the engagement party tonight, and I saw one of the rebellion from Shraga, and, you know, he, I think my brother, yeah, my brother was on his basketball team in, um, in camp, in Kolau, and I was just like, I was talking to the Rebbe and the Rebbe, you know, we're asking each other questions and we're just having, I'm trying contest. We just kept <laughs> all of our answers. We're just trying. I'm trying. We're just trying. We're just trying. We're just trying. Cover. We're just trying. Samson. What am I doing? What am I doing? Trying is the doing. Or doing is no. the trying. It's the doing. In Hebrew, The word anasot means to to it means it means it has the same shorish as nace. This isn't. I didn't want to talk about this. I don't want to mention this. I just have a different look on it. Whatever. I don't want to say it. I'll say something else. Sorry. Kids are. We need to build the reality we believe in and not rely on a miracle for us to just believe. Man, man. Uh, the reason I put the home in touch, and I could have put in the, the masks because this is deep in Yen Tachposet, but I feel like not many people talk about the home in touch, you know? Like, what do we, what in do we hear about home in touch? And who's, who's talking about such things? Why do we even need home in touch? Oh, it reminds me of Haman's ears. Come on, what's going on here? Haman didn't have triangle ears. Maybe he did. <laughs> but it's unlikely. Who, who has triangle ears? The Indian of Hamantashan. Bichlal, like, I could have put a cookie. I could have put a, a stam, whatever. I, I could have had a cookie with a triangle. What if to fill it with jelly? What if to fill it with chocolate? What if to fill it with anything? No, there's an Indian here. And it's what we were talking about today. That we have to realize that Hashem is Mamalakal Almond. Hashem is filling with the whole entire world. The Hamantashan is Hashem filling with the jelly. Is the jelly of the hamantash is Hashem filling each and every particle. The jelly is a thick, is thick. When you eat a hamantash and you bite into it, and it's juicy. Jelly all over the face, like a, like like what I had before. I put the hamantash and I put I put the uh, jelly donuts from Hanukkah. Jelly all over the face, all over the place, because Hashem is filling everything. Then you have the, this is the whole Indian. Then you have the 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 outside. That's why Purim, Purim is so, so hidden, but we eat hamantash and we're just so revealed. You can always see what's inside. You see, oh, it's chocolate. Oh, it's, uh, oh, it's, uh, I don't know, apricot or whatever it want to be. But sometimes we get tricked and it's not, and it's not chocolate. It's, um, uh, it's poppy seed. Give out. Um, what can we do? But that's life. I'm serious. This is not a joke what I'm saying. This is the deepest Purim tar if you want to, if you want to understand what I'm saying. The jelly is the mamish Hashem filling the whole world. Sometimes we don't know what's being filled. Sometimes we don't know what the filling is. It's poppy seeds, it's chocolate, it's apricot, it's, it's strawberry. We don't know what the flavor is, but we know he's filling everything. And sometimes the flavor tastes different. Sometimes we like it, sometimes we don't. But he's still filling the whole world. And then we have to realize, wait, there's a, but there's this moist cookie on the outside. That jelly that we thought wasn't good is, is surrounded by such a moist, nice, sometimes crunchy, if you like them crunchy, cookie. For us to enjoy, for us to realize that sovev kol almin, that that power of Hashem that's surrounding the whole world, that we think is so so far away, that we think oh it can't be it can it can't be kashur to me. Hashem is this guy up in the sky trying to run my life. Mamish, it's right there surrounding your whole your whole being. This is the hamantashen. Why is it in a triangle? That's for the that's for the kabbalists. I don't know. Um, 
because there's a reason I just don't know it and maybe you guys have the idea I'm not there yet Thank you, well, right. Hashem, it's, it's the deepest, the, the, the Hamantashen is, is our understanding that Hashem is Mamalik Olam, He's filling this whole world and He's surrounding the whole world all at the same time. And he just wants us to realize that we might not like the flavor inside, but we have a moist cookie and a nice, nice surrounding border that we feel safe inside. Mira Hamantashen, he said, I want to know that I believe 100%. Amen. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Sam said that I, I think we know what time to get you. 11.25 p.m. <laughs> the deepest chidushim come out. Anyone else? Um, Bishim Kloistra, Tamar, Kira. Kira, all um, I wanted to share yesterday, but Baruch Hashem, we ran out of time because we were going oh. strong. Wow. Um, a few weeks ago on base, this girl, she's an atheist. Um, she was really upset that this... I think it was like an IDF Instagram account posted um, basically this unit down in the South. They caught um, a few people smuggling a bunch of weapons and interesting things. And she was upset that they wrote like um, through God, like with the help of God, they caught um, the people smuggling the weapons. And she like asked me, why Why do we think God, why do we give God credit for everything when we're the soldiers who are trained to do this, when it's us, it's not God. And it was kind of crazy to me how like, so like she can't see that we're literally like the vessel through which God works. And like we had this whole conversation and it was kind of eye-opening to me and like strengthened my thought that God literally is behind everything. And that's kind of what we were talking about yesterday. I just wanted to share that. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> wow. wow. If, if you only, did you share your thoughts with her? What? Do you share your thoughts with her? Yeah, we had like an hour conversation on this. <laughs> Tomorrow, you, just, you just made our perm. <laughs> Just bring him a sheikh, bring him a sheikh, man. You know, it's we say like who dim haita or the simcha, the sos and vikar. That's not what I wanted to quote. What's the quote I wanted to say? Um, go to Kara, go to go to Karikasti. He's gonna tell me. I'll get the quote in a second. Kira, there's not much. I mean, that story is is so beautiful. I like. All the time when I've experienced people like that, you know, Rav Cook says as well, like there's some atheists that are really the most religious people, some religious people that are really atheists. And it's not like a bash on each one, on either one. It's not like, you know, it's just saying that there's, there's so many kind of ways of viewing things and there's so much to learn from each person. Like, especially the people that have radically different views. It's like, Sometimes there's one Indian or like one specific way that they speak about something that ignites like a new fire within us that it's like, well, like I never could have learned that or seen that view from, you know, my regular friends that are comfortable and that just reinforce my ideologies. Like you're saying, it's like, it's, even though it's completely the opposite in a way, it's like, wow, that's kind of strengthens it even more. Um, and so it's, it's just like an unreal experience. But I also was just, um, I was just watching first time in many years one of the holiest films we all have to return is at the Shem and watch it. Uh, it's called uh, The Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> Heard of it. Got Tevye's hat. But um, the way it starts, like, I haven't seen it in many years and it's crazy. Literally the opening line, you know, Reb Tevye is there, Hasidic master. Um, and first of all, they're introducing the characters. You go see, it goes for a second. It points, says there's the, this beggar. And it just said, it just like randomly, it doesn't even say anything, but it says there's a beggar, Reb Nachum. The point says this guy in a white beard, clearly Rav Nachman, and they just wanted to put him in there. It's like they just zoom in and they don't even say anything about him. 
he's like running around. It's clearly when he was going to Israel, you know, he pretended to be a beggar. It's, it's very clear, whatever. But so what he says, he's like, it's like, what are we doing here? Like, what's what's a fiddler on the roof? Like, and first they discuss a little bit, like someone making music on the most imbalanced place. Like someone that's, that's purposely standing in the face of danger to create something beautiful. Like that's what a fiddler on the roof is. A fiddler is someone playing this beautiful violin, standing on the roof in between fire and water, in between life and death, you know, maybe falling off, maybe not. But he says like to us, this is, this is what we do. This is who we are. And how do we stay balanced? Tradition. You know, the tradition song. Tradition. You know? We all know. It's, it's, but it's like, it's the craziest thing. It's like, he's like, this is the entire concept of, of, of our town, of, of our Jewish people. We, we purposely, we're not afraid to go in the face of danger, you know, whether it's like Esther, whether it's like Arab Jack or especially like Rebbe Sintomar, right? Like really, really, we're standing out there purposely going in the, in the face of danger. But it's just like, it's just about making that beautiful Kiddush Hashem for ourselves and, and for everyone around us and just making beautiful music, the song of the soul, the song of the world. And it's just who we are, what we do. And we stay, we stay stable by the tradition, like you were just saying there, even from that specific story. So, um, so it's a shame, like in Purim as well, you know, we'll, we'll rise up, face the story, face the story of our past, story of our present, with all the difficulties going on, have some pizza. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll no, well, be fiddlers in the roof one day, hopefully. Oh my goodness. Kira, there's so much light. I need these sunglasses. Tamar, Samson, and Kira's drinking from the PS5 uh, mug. <laughs> it's so good. Samson, were, what, what Pasuk were you going to quote? I'm going to quote in the Megillah that it says, Asher Ishla to Hayahudin Haim of Which um, is kind of confusing. It means. Um, it's like right when the right when the, the Yidin won the war. It says they 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 took over and they, they got gained control basically. Hema Vesanehem, the they themselves and and they're against that for them and their enemies is like the question. So the the deep question is who is Hema? What is Hema Vesanehem? Who are them and their enemies? What does it mean the Jews want to war against themselves and the enemies? And when Tamar was telling us about the Holy Jew who's arguing about, about God in the world, this is exactly what I thought about. The whole Indian of Purim, if you look in the in the in the deeper Midrashim and in the Kabbalah and, and Hasidus, I, I learned this once from the Yard Vash, who was with Rav Davidal, who is the Rebbe of um Ibani Saskar. Um, the hours to watch the deep safer, and um, and um, the yards to watch says, um, and he, he, he extrapolates it from a lot of people that the perm's all about Megara the Gerim. And sometimes those Gerim, quote unquote, Gerim are, are us ourselves. There's a part of us that we go every Shabbos, right? For men and for women, it's a little different. It's when they do the Shabbos candles, but. For men, it's when they go to the mikvah. That in the mikvah for the men is when you're supposed to be thinking about uh, converting that part of you that is that is that that go, went against the Torah the, this week. In that part of you that is not going against that is going against Hashem as well. They're saying I'm taking that part of me that did this wrong thing and that wrong thing, and I'm being the guy here. I'm converting it into Jew because I wasn't acting as a Jew. And therefore, I wasn't a Jew for a moment. And I did this wrong thing or that wrong thing. Wow. And for the women, when they're blessing the Shabbos candles and they're saying the tefillos, they're the Yiratzon and whatnot, there's an Indian there to think about bringing that, the light of Shabbos, the light of Yiddishkeit, so that they, it purifies the whole home to have a Yiddish, a Yiddish home. And this is the whole Indian of Purim. That we take that part of us that is that needs to be Megayer. I have parts of me too. It's not only someone who's only someone who says outright there is no God. It needs to be Megayer. It's, it's me too. I have so much that I need to do. Um, this is the Indian. Hey, Mavis, they, they mamish. 
the Yidin in Purim, what did they do? They gave us the ability to, to be my guy again, to, to literally have that power of truth. And it's not even truth. It's a total, it's, it's a total a total 180. Mamish. Mamish outreach to enrich. Mamish. I don't know exactly. You got to explain. But first of all, I was saying like what, you, what you're saying, you know, it's something we're used to doing, especially as a Chabad master yourself, like, you know, we try and speak Chabad. to... I'm not, I'm not Chabad. No, Chabad master. That doesn't... No, okay, I don't know. But uh, no, just a master of Chabad, because you're a master of al so it must be also a master. No, I'm just saving myself. <laughs> but um, I'm saying like, you know, yeah, with master, general... Master of none. But whatever, <laughs> I'm saying like, you know, you're saying the concept of, you know, we're used to doing outreach, trying to save other people that we think you know need saving or, or we look to see who could help that's quote unquote on the outside um and and the first level of it is you're saying like you know we, we've studied all these the quote unquote outreach practices we've studied how to help you know other people how to try and teach them torah we have to do like exactly the same for ourselves like the, those parts of us those parts of ourselves tell ourselves a, a dvar torah if we need to you know talk the same way we would speak with someone else have that conversation with the part of yourself but even beyond that as well, about the outreach inreach, uh, Rav Shlomo or Rav Yair, they, they say, I mean, there really is no such thing as outreach at all. Like outreach means you're, you're talking to someone that's not in the same circle as you. But in Yiddishkeit, like there's only such thing as inreach. We're all inside, you know, and, and that's why, I don't know, you were saying like there, if someone doesn't act like a Jew for that moment, they're not a Jew. I'm not sure hundred percent, maybe you can clarify like what you meant by that as well. But, you know, everyone's on the inside, like there's only such thing as inreach ever we whether it's in ourselves or even to people that look like they're outside of us you know within the jewish people it's it's always in reach we're always together it's like uh so clarify and i'll just clarify the jew and not jew uh quick and then i'll give her jack the work um i believe the way it was explained to me is that when is it it's um, Obviously, in the core of, the, of our of our neshamas, it's cool, aloku, cool godliness, cool yiddishkeit. But as we as we go towards the outer surfaces, we can convince ourselves that some of the practices we do are that are might seem as though we're Jewish yidden and believing in in all the chevra and all the stuff are actually not. And I think who said it? Um. You said it just now that um, you can have a person who is the, um, the biggest religious guy, but really is an atheist, or the biggest atheist is really religious. Um, it's kind of like that. It's more of like convin not convincing yourself, but really believing that what I'm about to do, whether it be like like the Rebbe Rashab, the fifth of Rebbe, says that a person before he, uh, when after a man sits and puts on filling, you should sit and think about not even go over a Torah study, think about to themselves for a chatzisha, he says a half an hour, um, a Hasidic idea. Now, of course, everyone knows the word sha'a doesn't mean hour, it actually means turn. So a person, all they have to do is before they start davening, they get into the Bay Knesset, they sit down and they think for half a second, for half a half a sha'a, half the time it takes for you to turn your head, half the time you have to do this, half that time. That's all you have to think about for that amount of time that's, and think about one Hasidic idea, one one deep idea that you connect to. Before you say any word of tefillah, before you just turn your head, that amount of time, one second, think, ah, oh, I'm standing before Hashem. It already is, that's, that's already at a holy level for one second. And you go on and get on with your day. But what I was saying basically is, is, is that it's that aspect of, that it seems so far away that I've done this thing wrong and it's that part of me there's a part that is far away from Hashem at that point. But really, obviously, it's, it, there's no such thing as far away in proximity. We can always go and extrapolate more, but I think it's enough for now. You guys are just revealing so much. It's so good. <laughs> I guess we're, like, I'm just, like, trying to practice for perm. You know? Just trying to practice for perm. Okay.
Um, we shall all be healthy, happy, successful. Unbelievable. Tomorrow, Bezrat Hashem, I don't know exactly which time we are going to do stealing, but there will be stealing because we could always steal. One second. Just one, we need one second. Just one second. Just one second. Kevra, keep shining. Keep shining and have an amazing night. Dream big and the covered perm. One day. When, we've been counting down since 105, Kevra. It's exciting. It's exciting. It's fun. Oh, oh, this is big. Tomorrow, obviously, there's the Steel Torah. It's our two year anniversary together. I'm stealing, I'm stealing Torah. Two year anniversary. I just found out. I promise you guys saw the picture. <laughs> you just found out. The first link, the first link was sent out two years ago. Per, per, Trevor, be well. Be well. Fired up. Stealing Torah anniversary.